Um, good morning, everyone. So as Stuart said, I'm Thibaut Capra. I'm an application engineer at uh, YellowScan. And today I will be presenting uh, ongoing research that we are having at, uh, at YellowScan, where we aim at directly comparing the VLP16, also known as PAC, from Velodyne, to the Regal Minivax. Uh, please note that this is uh, ongoing research, so the results may vary uh, in the upcoming uh, paper. So as the spine of this presentation, uh, I will start with a general introduction, our comparison objectives, and the comparison perimeters. Um, I will go through every survey site and describe it. I will talk a bit about the UAV platform that we flew and uh, our philosophy at YellowScan about uh, system integration. I will then go through our workflow uh, from the field mission and the data collection. And then I'll go a bit through the LIDAR uh, da data post-processing. Then I will, we will dive into the results and we will wrap up this presentation with uh, discussions and our conclusions. So the comparison objectives and the study sites, uh, we, wanna, we wanna compare both sensors on an apples to apples basis. So that means that for every site here, so for the vegetation penetration, the power line detection and the swath measurement, we want to have the same flight conditions. So for one study, all the flights for all the tools must be flown on the same day with identical flight plans and obviously the same UAV. So we want to find relevant study sites. So here you can see that we are kind of blessed in the south of France with the weather. So we have very nice flight conditions. So the first site for the vegetation penetration is um, next to Yellowscan headquarters. It's in Assas city in the south of France. Uh, it's a gently sloped hill with a very dense uh, Mediterranean pine coverage that are about 10 meters high. Uh, the flight parameters, I will go more in detail about these later, but it was 10 stacked flat uh, flight lines at five meters per second uh, ground speed, uh, starting from 30 meters up to 120 meters. For the power line detection, uh, it was a distribution line really close by. Uh, the total flight line was 450 meters long. We flew a single flight line from 30 meter to 120 meter with a ground speed of four meters per second and a vertical speed of one meter per second. The last site is a well-known site of us because it was the former calibration site for our units. It's the SS model plane field. So it has a, land, a small landing runway. It's a flat and well-known terrain. It has a bit, uh, some hard tables we can see. About the flight parameters again, so it's very similar to the forest we flew. Uh, 10 stacked flight lines again at uh, five meters per second ground speed, uh, starting from 30 meter above uh, ground level and uh, up to 120, so that's 400 feet. The unit we flew is the Onyx Star Fox C8 HD. It's an octocopter uh, that has a mic microcopter autopilot. It can fly up to 25 minutes. Um, so this is the unit that was embarking both of our systems. Our systems that I will present right now. At Yellowscan, we are system integrators. So we combine uh, LiDAR sensors with INS, onboard computer, and battery in a small form factor. So the Yellowscan surveyor is the um, integration of the VLP16 from Velodyne combined with an uh, INS from Planex, the APX15. It has um, also the onboard computer, as I said, in the battery. Uh, on the other side of the ring is the uh, Yellow, uh, Yellowscan VX, which is the Regal Minivax integration, uh, combined with uh, either uh, APX15 or an uh, APX20 from a Planex. Still has an onboard computer 
and a battery. Um, specifications wise, uh, the VLP16 has up to 300,000 points per second uh, and 16 uh, discrete laser beams and a typical flight altitude of 50 meters. On the other side, the Regal Minivax has a 100 uh, kilohertz frequency, so that amount of points per second, and a single beam, but his uh, typical flight altitude is 100 meter. So about our workflow, how we process the data before analyzing it in the results. So first we start to collect the data on each site, and then from there we extract the trajectory, the raw trajectory. We use a base station to collect PPK data. We combine it using POSPAC to get a corrected trajectory that is also called SBET for smooth estimated best trajectory. And we combine that trajectory with the raw laser data and the calibration angle from the, each unit into our software so we can get the full trajectory for the flight and LAS point clouds. This point cloud and the trajectory can be then processed further into, for example, TerraSolid for classification and feature extraction. So to remind you a bit of the flights we did, um, we call that the vertical radiator because it looks like obviously a radiator. Uh, we started at 30 meter above the ground level on the canopy filled uh, location, starting at 30 meter up to 120. Each line is uh, 10 meter away from the others. For the power line, it was only one line, always ascending from 30 to 120 meter above that distribution line that is approximately 10 meters high. And for the SWAS measurement, it's basically the same um, flight plan as the forestry, but above ground level. So let's start with the results we got from the point density measurements we wanted to, to have and the ground penetration. So here is a transect of the surveyed area uh, for our density and uh, ground description part of the study. So two areas were selected, one for the actual study and one for the reference. The altitude is actually measured from here. So this is the altitude here and this is the takeoff site. Let's dig in the results. Um, from the total point on top, we can see that the echo distribution of the minivax shows a descent amount of second echo on every flight altitude. For the VLP-16, we can see that the amount is still decent within its typical flight altitude, within the 50 meter limit. Starting from there and up, we have less and less echo, and this is percentage. So here we barely have a few points. The Minivux, though, presents around 10 to 5% of third echo here and a very negligible amount of fourth and fifth echo. When we focus on ground points, we can see that the part, the implication of second echo is something that is some, to be considered. Uh, for the Minivux, you have north to 50% of second echo on the ground. And for the VLP-16 also, at 30 meter, you have around 50% and still a very considerable amount of second echo. Um, for the minivax, you still have around 10 to 5% decreasing with the altitude of third echo and still a negligible amount of fourth and third echoes. Let's uh, look at a bit more about the density of the data. So this is for the total density. Uh, at 30 meter, what's, what's striking is that we can find that three times the amount of points 
from the VLP16 in its typical operative range. Here we have around 450 points per square meter, and for the VX, um, 150 points. So that comes obviously from the frequency. And then the, the Minivux has a slowly decreasing amount of point density down until 120 meter to 40 point uh, per square meter. The, the VLP16 has a very more steep slope uh, decrease. And we can see that the lines cross around uh, 65 meter altitude. So after that point, the Minivux has a better density than the, than the VLP16, but before the VLP16 has a higher density. If we focus on the density on the ground points this time, the VLP16 still has more points uh, at low altitude, at 30 meter. The, the, the VLP16 has a better density, but then uh, again, that steep slope is here, and the lines cross at around 55 meter. The VUX uh, handles and keeps a good density of down to five me uh, points per square meter at 120 meter flight altitude. And the VLP-16 is not really usable above 90 meters because this is one point per square meter, so that's not a good ground description. Let's now look at the results for the power line detection. So what I did for power line uh, detection, I want to analyze the linear density of points. So what I did is, for example, for the value at 30 meter that we can see here, I took points from 25 to 35 meter altitude above the line, I counted the number of points divided by 10 meter, and you have the average number of points per meter. So at the very beginning, at 30 meter altitude, you can see that the VLP16 has a very high count of points on the line, up to 25, but it decreases really rapidly. Down at 50, you don't even have one point per meter on average. While the Minivox still has a decent amount of points. So, uh, a good mathematical uh, modeling of uh, the wire would require about one point per meter. And this is where the limit is for the VLP16, around 45 meter above the wire, while the, the Minivax can handle it up until around 100 meter. Uh, note that these results may vary depending on the line, uh, on the wire, on the, its texture, texture and color. So the darker and the less reflective, the less points you will have, so you will have to fly lower than that. And now the last results uh, are for the SWAF measurement. So this is the VLP16 SWAF, for example, and this is the Minivox SWAF. So theoretically, the SWAF are easily calculated using trigonometry, uh, and these are the to-be-expected SWAF for each sensor. In orange, you have the VLP16, and in blue, the VX. What I did for the SWAS measurement is a bit subjective because I used the classification. And on SWAS borders, automated classifications start to classify points as low points and outliers. So I decided, I figured that this is the limit to have usable data. When your points start getting uh, considered as outliers, this is non-usable data. So this is very subjective. And I measured the SWAS this way. So we can see that for the VLP16, it follows the trend of the expected result. And um, for the Minivux, this is way above expected results. Um, we'll discuss it uh, a bit later. So as a food for thought and discussion, we can, we can say that there is a, a flight altitude variation, uh, so we might want to change the UAV uh, because we had a lot of uh, unexpected uh, altitudes. 
and the most important point is the ground penetration statistics are relying on your classification. So if your classification is wrong, chances are your stats are, are wrong too. And uh, we are looking into defining a more rigorous way of measuring the SWAS that could be density based um, or, for example, based on the scan angles. So note again that these are uh, preliminary results. Uh, we will, in the upcoming white paper, uh, to be published, add more sensors to the comparison. So most notably the brand new VLP32C from Velodyne and uh, another sensor we have been integrating uh, historically, it's the IBOLAX. We will also conduct a precision and accuracy study. So as a conclusion, the results shown are specific to the study areas. The flight altitude has, a, has an actual impact on performance and uh, for more specific results, the vegetation, for the vegetation penetration, the VLP16 is better than the Minivax on its typical operative range. If you want to fly higher, then the Minivax performs better. The second echo overall for both sensors is really beneficial um, for ground description. It represents a very large part of the points on the ground. As for power lines, the Minivax outclasses the VLP-16 in terms of detection range. But in its operative range, the VLP-16 still has a higher density. For the SWATH, the first results we have is that laser obviously impacts the range, uh, and the, swath, uh, the laser range, sorry, impacts the SWATH of the sensor. And from the first results we have, the Minivox SWATH is at least uh, twice as large as the VLP-16s, so which leads to uh, increased productivity.